Hey everyone and welcome to Eye to Eye. On shows like CSI, DNA samples are run through a national database in the blink of an eye. But in reality, it takes a lot of time and effort to make that system work. Bob Orr spoke to a senior FBI scientist about what the Bureau is doing to speed up the process. If we get people into the database, convicted offenders, arrestees, whatever crimes are able to be put in there, the more people we have in there, we know that there's recidivism, which is the whole idea behind this. We know that someone who commits a crime generally doesn't just commit one crime, they commit other crimes. This is what we're looking for. People who have committed crimes that weren't detected, either sometime in the past or even currently, um, this is the way we're going to find them because uh, we're comparing these, this offender or arrestee or whoever's in this database with forensic cases, unsolved forensic cases, and this is how we're going to find them is you're going to have a hit with DNA that's left at the scene of a crime with someone who's in that database. The more people we have in that database, the better chance we have of solving some of these crimes. We instituted robotics back about a year and a half ago, which increased from when we used to do this manually, we could do about 400 samples a month. And using the robotics, right from the, as soon as we implemented robotics, we got it up to about 2,000 a month. The way we have it currently set up, we can do about eight to 10,000 samples a month. What we're planning now is bringing on new robotics, and, and we plan to have that on uh, working by the end of the year. We're going to be able to handle about 30,000 samples a month. So it's, it's greatly increasing the number of samples we can get in. And overall, our guesstimate is in about two years, the backlog will be completely gone, and we will be running samples as they get here. In the meantime, though, you are on the clock, and I mean, Stuff happens every day. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I'm sure that you wish you had some answers for. Yeah, it, it, it would be nice. But like I said, we're, we're just applying everything we possibly can to get this thing done. What about the quality of the work? I mean, when, when an individual does it, can very carefully watch, a machine is a, is a machine. Is the work as good or better, or how do you make sure that it's good? Whether it's a person working on that DNA sample or whether it's a robot, the quality is going to be right because we have a lot of very tight standards in the DNA community to be able to do this work. However, with a robotic, it's going to be much more uniform. So when the robot applies uh, reagents to a sample, it's going to be exactly the same every single time. A human being working, you could get a little bit of fluctuation. Not enough that it's going to affect the test, but it's the difference between a human and a robot. It's going to be very much more standardized using the robotics. Also, the robotic can obviously work a lot faster. Talk to me a little bit about uh, the public expectation. I mean, uh, DNA uh, seems to be have a magical allure. People watch it on television. They solve mm -hmm. crimes all the time. Uh, this has kind of raised the ante for you. Oh, yeah. You know, DNA is a powerful tool, um, and, and the, the national database is an unbelievable powerful tool, and, and we're reading about it every day, cold cases, cases that wouldn't be solved other than a hit in this database. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's a huge... It's a huge thing for the entire country, for the world. It, it's nation. It, it's worldwide. It, it's also a uh, hot entertainment fair. I mean, you see it on TV. Oh, oh they, yeah. They solve cases on television in 30 minutes. They do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> it, we, we haven't been able to match that yet. 